Welcome to Art Walkthrough, where I guide you through my works to help you be a better player at the game of art. Recently, my workflow for concept art has been creating a very fast black and white sketch with a large brush, setting up general shapes and the perspective, and then going in and lowering the opacity and creating line art over it. And you'll see that I only created a few thumbnails for this piece, and then I quickly move on from that and create a 3D block out, which I didn't time lapse, but I'll show you what the layout looks like. It's very simple. The lighting only serves to highlight the shape, so that way I can create a grid inside Clip Studio Paint. Honestly, this setup is super simple. It's very easy to learn in Blender, and I highly recommend having at least a basic understanding of a 3D software so you can quickly block out and sketch concept art. Part of the reason I like to use 3D is because I'm still learning perspective and 3D is a very easy way of creating a perspective grid that looks dynamic, that really pushes shapes, it pushes the composition and perspective, which is something I wanted for this piece. I wanted the buildings to look very dynamic and I wanted to squeeze a lot into this piece. So it needed a wide angle and that's just really easy to do using Blender and it's super quick too. So once that's done, I start creating a line art for this. I went into this knowing I wanted this to be a little bit more kind of a grungy concept art feel. And this is going to be something that maybe you could create in a day and a day and a half. And so ultimately I think this took me about nine and a half, 10 hours, which is a day and a half's worth of work. I'm simulating in my brain, like what if this was a game? What if I was working for a company and they needed this piece done tomorrow? What would my workflow be like? Something that's been a really big inspiration for me recently has been the Ratchet and Clank concept art done by Lost Bear Studios. I am in love with his work, the way that he uses shapes and pushes characters and expressions. And I'm trying to incorporate that into this piece. I'm trying to get some big expressive shapes, even in the buildings, you know, cir huge circles and ventilators and things I'm almost pulling directly from the piece you see on screen because I just, it has so much character and so much life that I wanted to bring some of that into my own work. And you know, Magic Punk, the world that I'm building here is based heavily on very expressive properties like Ratchet and Clank, like Jack and Daxter. And so it just made sense for me to try and push this world in a direction that had a lot more character and a lot more expression in it. I've done a lot of paintings without good line art. And I will say every time I regret not doing line art. I, I can't explain to you how important a good line art pass is, even if you're gonna get rid of it. It is so helpful in just putting down useful information that you don't have to think about later. And that's kind of the whole point of concept art and this process is actually ideating and creating vision. And so part of the pipeline to help yourself create work that's memorable, that's, that sells an idea and tells a story well, is making sure that those smaller ideas and the details are handled early on because if you get later on into the painting and you're not sure what that part of the building was supposed to look like and now you have to solve it while you're coloring or rendering it's actually just frustrating and you're probably not going to solve it as well as if you had just done that in the beginning so the whole point of working in black and white to begin with working big to small is you solve the big stuff first and then you move down to details and line art is sort of that detail pass in the black and white stage and there's a lot of stuff here to solve. There's a lot of detail to add. There's a lot of, you know, fun pipes to add and a lot of dif different intricacies to the structures that I didn't think about before, but I am now as I'm going over it with line art. And there's kind of a story here, you know, there's this, we're in, we're in kind of this downtown section. Maybe there's some food being made or some sort of mechanic shop nearby. And, you know, this guy here in the front, he doesn't look very trustworthy. He, he's got kind of a smirk to him, like he's trading or smuggling some stuff he shouldn't be. And it kind of tells a story that this is not a nice place. You know, this is the Tatooine t style of area. You know, you, you run into maybe mobsters or pirates or guys who are just up to no good. And I just wanted to sell that feeling of like a lot of different people live here. A lot of honest people live here, but there's some not so good guys living here. And I wanted to make sure I captured that by just showing off a few different characters. And so in the front, you know, we have this ogre who's carrying this smuggling, this stuff uh, in boxes around and then we have a guy who's just trying to make a living being a cook and we have a guy who's running a mechanic repair shop and then we have an, another little goblin who's just riding a bike around like maybe he's just he's just a normal guy and he's <laughs> riding through town and there, there's someone in a mech there's a guy getting out of his ship and then in the distance we see flying ships you know it's kind of this indicator that there's maybe there's different layers to this town that we can't yet see you get the feeling of what this place is just by looking at the piece now a word from today's sponsor like to support my work directly 
Think about becoming a channel member with access to all access live streams and early access to videos. The Unroad page also has a bunch of freebies and a new paid core page teaching you to create high quality video game character art. A workflow I've used for clients such as say, such as say visit gumroad.com slash console jazz for more info. And now back to our programming. Okay. Part of this world building exercise for me is making sure that I'm just giving enough information to people to get engaged with the story and with the locales rather than creating these amazing portfolio pieces. That's part of it, but more importantly for me, I want to start fleshing out the world in a way that feels like other people can participate in it. And the next thing I'm gonna do after that is separate everything. So basically I'm gonna work from background to foreground. So I'm gonna make sure that my value pass reads well so that my darks are in the front, my midtones are in the middle, and my lightest are in the back. That's kind of the composition I was working with and I wanna make sure that that maintains all the way through. And so one way I like to do that is to just carve out those things and keep them separate so that way I have a lot of control over the shape and the value of them. So I just use a polygonal lasso tool and I just start carving out the buildings. And because I've worked in black and white, now I get to color it in a very strategic way. And so one way that I like doing that is using a hard light layer. I really like the poppy, punchy colors that come with the hard light uh, layer blend mode. And then I'm just slapping stuff around. You know, I'm using the lasso fill a lot because I like the way that it creates hard shapes and it creates interesting shapes. I won't be able to provide all the brushes I use for this, but you know, I used a lot of texture brushes to kind of get some of that grungy feel on the side of the buildings. Be very careful when using specific layer blend modes because they will mess with your values and it's going to ruin your composition if you're not careful. I'm going with that orange blue complementary color scheme for the entire thing. And I'm not even sure where the lighting is coming from, but I did end up doing a skylight pass, like an atmospheric pass on the characters so that way they pop a little bit more in the environment and it looks like the sky is beaming down on them. Maybe this is towards the end of the day, you know, maybe it is that golden hour light, or maybe it's the middle of the day and there's something covering this whole space that we can't see. But I really wanted the, the lights of the town to be blue to give it kind of that cold, eerie feeling while also having the, the vibrant, warm sun feel like this could be a place that you could live. You know, in, in an environment piece like this, besides the storytelling, something that's really important to me are the hard and soft edges. So I want to make sure that the edge of the buildings are very crisp. I want to make sure that the edge of these hard surface objects reads well, because if you have blurry hard surface stuff, the world begins to feel a lot more wobbly and a lot more gelatinous than something that's solid and made out of, you know, metallic and aluminum. And I just wanted to make sure that my line art didn't make things look blurry. My line art didn't make things look choppy. Like I want to make sure the edge of the building was just reading very, very clearly. So I spent a lot of time cleaning up the edge of these buildings so that they read well. And I wasn't able to capture all the footage for this piece. Again, there's about eight and a half hours in here and I probably spent 90 minutes to two hours off screen. And part of that was the 3D blocking, and the other part of that was some of the character coloring and building sketching. But for the most part, you can see the entire process here. It's the same for the characters. You know, I just spent more time on them off screen. And that's going to be the end of this painting. Thanks for being along for the ride. I hope you learned something. If you have any other more questions for me about my process or how I do things, feel free to leave comments in the comment section below. If you're interested in the lore of this world, you can follow the dedicated YouTube channel I've made for it called Magic Punk. Subscribe because I'm going to be doing more of these art walkthroughs. So if you feel like you learned something in this video, it'd be great if you shared it, gave it a like, left a comment, and shared it with a friend. That would be super helpful. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.